This is episode number 338 of the Inner Fight Podcast, as we are joined by the founders of Urban Ultra. Welcome back to another edition of the Inner Fight Podcast, brought to you by Smith Street Paleo. Remember, hop over to iTunes, rate and review the podcast, and we will send you a goodie bag of Smith Street Paleo treats. In this episode, we talk to the ladies behind Urban Ultra, those ladies that have been putting on some excellent outdoor events around the UAE for the last 10 years. Where you're on the world, thanks for tuning in. Let's enjoy the show. Here we are back again, and who else to bring on the show? The season is around the corner where all of the outdoor events are going to kick in. So what else better than to talk to the two ladies that make it happen? Pascal and Louise from Urban Ultra, welcome to the show, ladies. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Someone give us an intro to what Urban Ultra is and does. Look at them both pointing <laughs> to each other. <laughs> this is going to be brilliant. The what is it? Eggs. When was it set up? Come on, this is your chance. What, what's going on with Urban Ultra? Okay, our first event for Urban Ultra was a um, triathlon in 2005 in Dubai Creek Park. Believe wow. it or not, 2005. Two thousand. But listen, you've both been, you're both into this stuff. You're both into endurance sports. So is that how it came about? You just wanted to start things? Um, both Pascal and I were training for, I think it was the Grand to Grand Ultra, right? Or uh, before that? No. The HK100. The HK100, sorry. <laughs> HK100, which is a 100K trail race in Hong Kong. Right. Oh, wow. Um, so we were out and about looking for places in the hills to train on the right terrain that we would be going on which turned out to be the wrong thing because it was all steps in Hong Kong <laughs> so there are no staircases in Dubai mountains um, so we decided we'd go out there and explore do just just go out there and find new routes that aren't um, established let's yeah. say yeah. and we went out there and we just kept saying this is just the most amazing place and no one's been here because you can't get there by car you have to go there on foot there's no rubbish. There's nothing there. So we said, oh. well, why don't we bring some more people out here and um, expose them to this as well? It's not that far away from Dubai after yeah. all. And um, that's how it started. We just really? said, let's, let's bring some people out. Let's make a small race yeah. um, and let's see how it goes. And it just grew. And I mean, was it we're in we're in 2017 now. 2005 to a lot of people that live in Dubai is, is quite a while ago. <laughs> they don't really envisage, they can't understand that it was actually a place and what was happening. Was it a little bit alien in, in, in that time? Because, I mean, that's 12 years ago. Wolfie says a bike shop's been here 15 years. There, there was no Adventure HQ. So what you guys must have been doing must have been a little bit strange for people, wasn't it? It was, because in 2005, really, the triathlon scene wasn't anything. Yeah. We had Faris Al Sultan and uh, Chris McCormack come over. So we had... Um, the kings of triathlon, yeah. if you like, yeah. uh, come over and do their little race within our race. So it was a chance for the normal person to go into the water with these guys and do a pro race within, wow. you, know, you know, a normal That's race amazing. within a pro race. <laughs> and then I think it was two years after that that we actually started doing the trail runs. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you had to order everything online, trail shoes, it, any backpacks you had. There was nothing, yeah. nothing here, really. There was no trail scene at all. I mean, people were just running around Savo Park, and yeah. that was, you know, the 10K that they would do. Um, the marathon was as far as they would ever run, and it is a horrible run. It's, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's yes. not interesting. It's um, not. There, there's no feature. It used to be a lot better, but now it's even worse than it was than yeah. it, it used to be. Yeah. Um, so for us to get them onto the trails and for them to, you know, realize that you can actually have a family life out there on the weekends, uh, do some running, families having fun, and, you know, you camp and you discover a little bit more of the back back garden of Dubai. Yeah. It's, it's a fantastic way of, of uh, getting people together. So you, you, you were training and you start taking a few people out. How does it then... I mean, we're going to go through it. You've got an epic calendar for this for this coming up season. How does it then evolve to what to sort of a company and and organising races and what you are today? Well, as you know, as a trainer, the the your training goes from strength to strength. So you yeah. you beat one challenge, the challenge has to get harder to then do the next challenge. So that's how all our events really um, grew because. A 10k on a specific trail was, it was hard in the beginning, but then once people have done it, they've done it. Right. So we then do a 20, 
then we do a 30. <laughs> then we do a flat, 50. or we do or a 50. <laughs> or a 100. And or a 100. A 100. <laughs> and that's, that's how it goes, because people, get, people progress. They progress yeah. their fitness, they progress their challenges in their head and their yeah. lives, and it just goes from one thing to the next. Really? So you... you are you almost like? A, I mean, I, I can imagine it because obviously I've seen I've seen Dubai grow. But when you organised the first race and people wanted a little bit longer, was, uh, was no, they didn't want it. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't ask okay. for it. You wanted, make them. <laughs> you wanted them to want. But how does how does a culture? Because you've essentially started. You you girls started the culture and of of sort of trail running, and you provided this infrastructure for it together with um th- there was a dubai trail run then and is now the ue trail run well uh, actually be- club. actually before that you can't we can't take credit for actually just you know introducing people to trail running the, yeah. the first race that i did that we did was a, a moon um desert run out in i don't know camel farm area yeah. with a guy called Kevin West who I used to know in Abu Dhabi who um, used to do the triathlons with right. there were people he, out there doing he organised his own race it wasn't a, it was just a club yeah. kind of race right. and uh, when we did it I thought it was the most hellish race I've ever <laughs> done it was really hard it was self-navigating there were no markers so you just had to take coordinates with your um, very old GPS which yeah. was massive <laughs> Five and, uh, kilos worth. Yeah, um, try not to go through all the camel farms and then get to your destination and then come back again. It was it was seriously hard. Wow. So it's almost like a bit of orienteering at the start. Yeah, it was. So really, that kind of set the seed for, you know what, this would be great for a lot more people. Yeah. Um, but also we saw the scene gr- uh, growing throughout the, the rest of the world. I mean, right. trail running became like triathlon suddenly yeah. very popular yeah and we wanted to introduce that here in the ue i right. mean we we went to trail runs overseas there was nothing here yeah. so for us to then be able to create something here for people then to train for an overseas yeah. t- um, a bigger run or bigger race yeah. was something that we wanted to create and who are these people that that comes for all these trail runs like who's the target group and is there can you generalize and say that it's people from a 35 and above or is it young people or younger it's a really really mixed group okay uh i would say that trail run like triathlon or ironman actually has an older yeah sports athlete because yeah. they Mid-life just crisis sport kind next, of thing next <laughs> next generation yeah. pain let's call it that um, well, it's endurance I it's think endurance that. for sure uh but then you have the young the young ones that uh feel they want to. They're more health conscious. They want to improve their road running. So trail running is a great way to uh, improve your core, um, to to strengthen all the, the smaller muscles around your legs yeah. and your, your ankles. And it is much more mind um, occupying, me. occupying, <laughs> <laughs> um, which which makes you tired all over. It's not yeah. just you know you put your mind on zero, you put your music on, and you just run. Yeah. It is an all encompassing. Um, exercise. Yeah. So the younger ones also they okay. see they're more health conscious, so they see the benefits. Yeah, I think that's that's one thing that that is quite amazing, and you, you brought it up there, Pascal. Is is the difference you feel in your body when you've been <laughs> off road for a certain amount of time yeah. is absolutely incredible. And and you said it, and we should actually tell people that more. If you want to get better at running, go and run in the desert or go and run across trails because yeah. it really it really makes your body feel different because you use all of those muscles that you just don't use from normal running. A 10K run on trails is like feeling 20K on yeah. the road. Uh, it's, yeah. it, and, and also you can compare it to like a mountain bike or a, a road bike. If you do a 10K mountain bike, it is hard yeah. compared to a 10K on the road. On the road, yeah. So it, it actually enhances people's yeah. running I can imagine. Lot. Yeah. You, should we go? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I will go. So coming back to Urban Ultra, which is now your company, which you run the events under, tell us when you established that and sort of how, what was the purpose? The purpose, we, we heard it like to get more people running, but was it supposed to be a big business or how, how, what was your thoughts at the start? And maybe what's your thoughts now sort of 10 years later? No, for us, the, the business was kind of, the last thing we were thinking of awesome. it was mostly to get people to enjoy what we were enjoying when yeah, we were training amazing it, it was really and i don't say that in a very kind of um i don't know um i don't know uh, it, it's, it's something that unless you've been out there to those places yeah and seen other people enjoy those places 
that's what gives for me gives yeah. me the most satisfaction to see people do that yeah. whether we have I mean our first run which was um, was it the Night Rebel that was the Night Rebel yeah. our first run was the Night Rebel and I think we had 60 or 70 people yeah Wow. Really. It, it, but it wasn't much. I mean, it was small. Yeah. But it doesn't matter whether they're, for me, 60 or 600. Yeah. As long as people come over that line going, oh, my God, that was really amazing. Yeah. I enjoyed every single minute of it, despite the pain, but just the whole in, experience and the environment, that really is very... Um, so it was, it was all sort of born really out of passion. Yeah, it yeah. was our own passion that yeah. we then translated in, somebody else needs to see this. Yeah. Um, and, and, and our license, we have organized events before for our clients. Right. We're a graphic design advertising agency. We are a photography agency, so we're a lot of the times we're outdoors. We do a lot of photography out there. Yeah. And I want people to see it. I want yeah. people to, you know, to enjoy it. And you have your... A corporate part of the business and then we have our you know our lifestyle yeah. of our own hobby that we yeah. can do in the weekends yeah I think that's super cool and I mean definitely having been involved in a number of your events thankfully um, that definitely comes through when you started with the night rebel one thing I noticed about your events is you, you, you name them in quite a unique way this must be the creative marketing side <laughs> Like, talk to us about Night Rebel, 70 people. What It sounds to me like a nightmare to kick it off, but this was your first one. So let's go through the first one and we'll get to where we, we're coming to this season. I'm actually sure it was a nightmare for some people <laughs> who, who were running 30K in the dark. They were yes. wondering where the lights were. <laughs> 30K in the dark is a long way to be in your own... A uh, little bubble because that's all you have. So the first light. official race was 30k in the dark. It was a 10, 20, and a 30. Wow! <laughs> so it, it was it was a night. It was you know be a rebel and do something a little bit different. And awesome. now we're going to do this trail run in the dark with your head torch. Wow! So and 70 people. How many of them did the 30k? Very few. In right. fact, it's really funny because the first one it was narrowing towards the 30 so most people did the 10 yeah very few people did the 30 and now it's totally the opposite way around really more people are doing the 30 than the 10 <laughs> plus we see a m- huge split in the uh, female male uh, category now right. so it used to be like two or three females that would yeah. do most likely the 10 or the 20 yeah and now we have at, at least uh, 40 or 50 that do the 30 kilometer run wow. and they're very very good runners I actually think we have more girls that are interested in longer distance running in the gym Seems than like we yeah, have definitely. men. I think that's true as well, yeah. And the results are outstanding. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. had in the, in the Big Stinker, which is a 45K, 1,600-meter um, uh, elevation, Yeah. Um, I think we had five ladies in the top ten yeah. overall. Wow. That's quite impressive. Wow, that's They're just r- very good in endurance. They're very good. What, what do you think, you, you mentioned it before, Pascal, there, there is a growth in, in trail running per se globally. What do you think is really leading that? Is it the same passion that you, that you ladies have just to be outdoors and to enjoy the outdoors? Or is it a trend that we're seeing? Because from what I understand now, we've got all ages. There's not really any barrier to, the ent- to entry. So what do you think it is that's making this sport grow globally? I don't know. I think nature, I, back I think to nature. For really? me, I think it, a trail run is never the same, even if you do the same trail twice. Yeah. It's never the same as if you go out and do a 5K on the road. That's just monotonous every day. <laughs> a trail run, whatever time of day you're doing it, is yeah. always different. Yeah. You get different challenges, different everything. So yeah. for me, it offers more, um, just more um, variety in your yeah. run. Yeah. I guess. And the people, I mean, you... you you get a lot of newcomers come in and they said, oh my God, the atmosphere is so nice because yeah. trail runners are not individual people running just for time. Yeah. They are there for the same reason that you are. They yeah. want to see the outdoors. They want yeah. to enjoy the trail. But if something is wrong with you or something is needed, they'll stop and they'll right. ask if you need water. Yeah. That's awesome. Very good example. Um, our second Hadja 100, we had um, runners come over from Jordan and from Yemen. It came wow. over and a very very good runners. The first year, uh, one of the Jordan guys won, 
Wow. And the second year, he brought some more um, of his friends over. More ringers. And, and <laughs> yeah. they were very, very good runners. One of them had totally blown himself up on the first mountain. And he had already said to him, calm down, man, calm down. It's, it's too much. This is a really hard race. Yeah. You need to calm down. Second mountain, he cramped up so badly that he couldn't actually get off the mountain. Wow. He did eventually. <laughs> but he stopped. Right. And he came to him and he helped him and got him some water and right. walked with him for a while. And this is happening all the time. People yeah. just walk with you for a while and give your mental state a That's little boost, awesome. yeah. a little recharge. It's like, have you got enough to eat? Did you eat anything? Did you do this? Did you do that? Let's go. Let's do it together. Wow. And that's something you won't see on a um, you know yeah, a marathon no. run on the road. Absolutely. That's really a community feeling. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what we try to achieve at CrossFit as well and here at Interfight. And yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so cool to see people, you know, instead of pushing each other down, just lifting each other up. And uh, yeah. it yeah. brings just an amazing feeling to the atmosphere. Yeah, and it makes me proud, you know. When, yeah. when I see everybody coming over the line and I go back to the Hadja 100, because that is the hardest race uh, in the UE, I, I'd say. Um, they have 24 hours to finish it. And last year, the last one came in at 22 hours, 23 hours. Wow. 23 wow. and a half. It was yeah. raining and it was windy and it was cold. This was before the the snow fell on the yeah, on the right. Jabal Jais um, yeah. mountain. Yeah. So this this was, it was a cold period. Yeah. And these guys come over the line and, you know, I have tears in my eyes when I see that happening yeah, because I know what it feels like. Yeah. I'm always the last one in, <laughs> you know. Um, and sure and to not. have... No, surely. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and and it, it's nothing to, it. to do with how fast you do it. It's keep strong. Keep your mind strong and you can do it. Yeah. Anyone can do it. It's not your body that's going to give up. It's your mind. So yeah. keep strong in your mind. I think that's it. that sense of camaraderie is super, super strong within... within uh, do you think it's within outdoor sports generally because of the elements? But I, I know I it's super so. strong in trail running. It's... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I would say the same thing is with hikers. You know, yeah. you don't leave a hiker behind yeah. if, if they're in trouble or they twisted the ankle. You know, it's like, well, I've got somewhere to be. See you later. <laughs> it, it's it's uh, n- people with nature is you accept that yeah. th- things are being thrown at you, yeah. and you're gonna have to deal with it. Very yeah, cool. It, it does attract a certain type of person, the person who likes to be outside and yeah. enjoying the outdoors. Yeah, it was quite interesting when I sort of walked into the world of trail running and ultra because. I didn't really know what to expect, and it's, it is a very interesting type of person. They, they, they just appreciate different things, and I think that's one of the most interesting things for me is that you, you learn that from people. Like, I learned a lot from you ladies, and you learn a lot of these different things that just sat in the concrete of Dubai. You just never really learned, do you? No. Especially with the younger generation. Like, yeah. like all you. we do is on our phone. How old are you? 23. 23. <laughs> No, but like my generation and and younger, all we do is sit on our phone or our laptops. And yeah. unless you are really active in any kind of sport, I mean, that's all you do. So I really think that there could be even more potential that that has been already done with the sport. Because I think most people need to get outdoor a lot yeah. more. And yeah, eventually there will happen like a big change I think and also don't forget there's a real big social aspect to it as well you know a lot of people they come they camp together they have their little campfire they they, you know they after the run they stay or the day before they camp and even our um, our staff that we have for for the seasons they love coming because they love camping with their friends you know and and, and we we take that into that is part of the job yeah um, that was how I managed to con uh, Holly and a few of the other guys' wives to go to, to, to one of the events. The, the how did Desert you manage Stinger. that? I told them I'd take them a bottle of white wine. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. I'm there. I, I took them a bottle of white wine and uh, we made a nice fire. And then, I don't know, apparently there was, uh, there was sand in the glass. So I was in trouble again. <laughs> As you were in the desert, that's kind of something that's exactly, always Exactly, exactly. So you kick it off with the Night Rebel, and that's also that's the first event of, 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 of this season this season. Talk us through when the season runs, and, and let's run through some of these events, because I think that's the most interesting way for people to know sort of what they are, because you do runs, you do, they can walk them, you've got a big bike race. So let's jump into the, the first event of the season, which again is the Night Rebel. What is it? When does it take place? What do people need to know? We have a new sponsor for this one. This is the Next Torch Night Rebel. So um, that's, awesome. that's it's a great uh, way to, to introduce those guys. They've been supporting us for quite some time now yep. for Urban Peak. Ah, very cool. Um, 
So they supply the head torches? No, they don't, unfortunately. <laughs> but they, they, have, they have a great range of head torches that you can use. But, okay. Um, this is quite early in the season. Because right. it's a night run, we can, we can make it on the 22nd of September. So right. that's a really nice thing to kick off your um, uh, season with a 10 or a 20 or a 10. 20 or 30. So you've, still, you've got those three options. Yeah. People can just choose what, yeah. what they do. How does an event like that work? Like if I want to do the 30K or no, you do the 30K, I'll do the 10K. How, do we, how, how does it all work? So you register online. Uh, yep. You have the urbanauto.com website. So you go online, you look at the, the events, check out what they are, where they are. This one is an out in the back, so it's also a safe feeling for a lot of people. Right. So you have a lot of people on the course the whole time, you right. know, on your own, doing a big loop. So people are spreading out. You don't see anyone for a while. Right. So this one is quite safe in, in your mind. It's always safe, but <laughs> in, in people's mind. And we have three checkpoints. So at uh, 5K, there's a turnaround. 10K, there's a turnaround. Okay. 20K, there's a turnaround. So all I need to be able to do is get 5K somehow, and I'm safe again. You're safe. You're, <laughs> yeah. you're on your way back. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. What about yeah. equipment? I mean, if I wanted to do it the 22nd of September, what would I need? All you need is a pair of trainers. And a backpack. And a backpack. With, yeah. with, um, we have a, a quite... Uh, rigorous safety um, implica- uh, sorry, um, uh, safety measures that we yeah. make people do. You have to have a, a, a mobile on you with our emergency numbers. You have to have a first aid kit with you. You have to have a um, hydration pack that is at least a liter or a liter and a half, depending on the distance you run. Yeah. And it has to be full. I'm not asking you to just <laughs> run with it with nothing in it. People keep getting caught out and thinking yeah. that they don't need it because they're used to running a 10K on the road without any problems. Yeah. This is not a 10K on the road. This no. is going to feel like a 20K on the road. Yeah. And you may twist an ankle. You may have to sit there for a little bit. We will come to you. We have many, many cars on the road. We have um, first aid at checkpoints. Yeah. We are there for you, but... You are out there. You, have, you you know that you know like like a trail walk or a hike. If something happens, you need to be airlifted. You need to wait for a while. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that was one of the things when when I did the first of your event and I got like a three page PDF document. I was like, hang on a minute, I'm just going for a little run in the desert, and 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 they send through this thing, and I started reading it. I was like, these guys are for real. <laughs> There's mandatory equipment, and and then you see some people in trouble, and you've got all the equipment so that's that's one piece of advice i would definitely give to people and it's not a lot it's not a lot it's not honestly as a pair of trainers you would normally take a backpack anyway if you're going to go for a 10k run and it just needs to be a bandage some um band-aids or something just just something to stop bleeding basic first aid basic first aid stuff and your water i mean who would go out with here without water really <laughs> it know. always surprises me there are plenty of people rocking up to the gym with no water still but that's a different story so it's an out and back so you can do you run out 5k run back 5k same or for you walk you or can you can walk it and that's what i was going to ask is, are, there, are there time cut off yeah. so is there a sort of how, how does all of that work for well for the first for this for the night rebel usually it's a very generous time for it's all five, of our races five hours for the 30k it's right. five hours for the 30k Right. Um, but usually, it's we we gauge it based on mar- marking the course. Right. So, however long it takes me to mark the course, <laughs> uh, you know, it would be very similar if someone's walking and not stopping. Right. Yeah. So it's a very generous cut off. Right. Because we want people to finish. Yeah. We don't want people to come all the way out there, which is actually forty-five minutes, but it feels like you're in a, a, a long way away. Whereabouts is the night rebel? This is in Shoka, right. which is forty-five minutes it's from not Dubai. Far not, not far yeah. at all. Not far at all. And. Um, we want them to finish. We want them to come over the finish line in yeah. a good state. So, you know, we give them a generous cut-off time. What, how do you pick the course? This one is a really quite, I say easy because it's very established with cars. Because sometimes you speak a little bit evilly about the courses that you've set <laughs> out. <I've been laughs> it's true. You know it, Pascal. Come on, support me here. Yeah, if there's She's a like, hill, she wants you to go over it. <laughs> like, if you see a hill, you'll be going over it. Yeah, it I've way. heard you say that more than yeah. one time. But how, how do you put together a course? So it's out of Shoka. For those that don't know, mountainous, rocks scrambling a it, little it, bit it's our, a combination of safety i was going to say our, um, fr- our first look is uh, our pr- priority is able to get 
um, ambulances or our vehicles there right. for support. Awesome. That has to be done. Yeah. Once we've done that and we know that we can get the cars to certain points, then we can go off trail and take you anywhere we like, really, <laughs> which usually happens. So and scrambling up rocks, scrambling down. Is them. it the same course that you do each year or do you try and change it to make it more interesting or to make it more challenging, maybe? We, we add courses. Right. Okay. So we, we keep the ones that people like to do and uh, other people have not done yet and want to do. Yeah. Uh, and we add different routes. Some routes have been used for different sponsors and then we said okay the one that we had we're going to change because we want to keep that race but yeah. the route is, and we don't want to do it the same again so right. let's, let's add another one to it so there's plenty of different I mean if people are thinking of tra- going out training for for example the first event that we're talking about there's plenty of routes that they can go out and oh, absolutely and we and like involved. to all of our races have something s- special about them unique right. let's say so the, the Night Rebel as I said run in the dark yeah it's different. Run, run that in the dark in the day and it's just totally, totally different. different race yeah wow um, then we've got the UTX 50 which um, last year we did a whole it's called the UTX 50 so it's like extreme everything so right. it's sand it's wadi it's mountain so you'll do a, all, all three things in wow. 150k wow um, the big stinker it's it is a big stinker. <laughs> it's really really you'll diff- stink as well afterwards it's, diff- <laughs> it's a difficult race yeah um, the Hajar as I said it's just down the down the um, the Hajar mountains or just uh, 100k down there yeah the Wadi racer you're racing the sunrise so you start in the dark and then you get to the finish line as the sun's rising wow and all of these are running races. Um, this we one have, is. We have one, um, the coast to coast, which is the cycle race. Yeah, again, uh, we started the coast to coast many, many years ago, purely for our own um, charity <laughs> fundraising. That was in two thousand five as well. I yeah, think. To, yeah, very really? busy in two thousand five. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bought a new house, changed yeah. jobs. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a uh, golf for good event that we were um, doing, and, and in that um, charity, you, you raise funds to give to the charity that they are going to give it to, and it was a cycle a cha- um, a sa- cycle challenge. Wow. So we were cr- we were crossing borders. We were go- cycling from um, Thailand to Cambodia. Wow! So we thought let's do an equally um, uh, similar race, not a race, a ride here where we cross borders from the Dubai to the so the, from the east coast to the west coast. Right. So we cross borders to Fujairah from the Dubai side, and I think we had about a hundred people. Didn't we signed up for that? I can't quite remember. It's a long time ago. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so and. That, but that race has, has, has run every year or has been ridden every year since it, it 2005? Was, it was the first one that we did. And then uh, Wolfie, was a was, Wolfie started yeah. at that time as well with his uh, bike shop. Yeah. And obviously they had their uh, club rides. And um, Enrique, who was also on our charity ride, right. and is a uh, avid um, Dubai Roadster rider, yeah. he said, could we continue with this, uh, this, this route? And right. So they continued it. Um, but then... Two years ago, um, Wolfie came back to us and said, look, I, I, you know, I'm not an event organizer. I really want to give this back to you. Yeah. And now you're doing Urban Ultra and you're organizing events. Yeah. Uh, would you take it back to organize it properly? So oh. that's what we did. It was organized properly. It was. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Edit that. Edit that. <laughs> Edit that part. <laughs> it's always been a very well organized race. And yeah. We suggest you get involved. But it now starts. So where did it used to start and where did it used to finish? And it now starts somewhere different, right? Um, it's it's a real coast to coast now. Okay. So we start on. The you can sh- say that it's moved to Dubai because the people in Dubai weren't very kind and they didn't take care of you, and now you run it from Sharjah. <laughs> I know the truth. <laughs> I said it, you didn't. It's, Carry on. It's a real coast to coast. We go from the Sharjah lagoons on the water yep. side. It's a stunning start, actually. Yeah, it is. And then we go all the way um, east to Kalba, and then up the east coast all the way to Fujairah. So it, wow. it really is a stunning. How many kilometers? Two hundred. Two hundred. You up for that, Dre? So, mate, we've actually got quite a busy schedule here. We On the 22nd, we're going to run in the dark. September, yeah. Forget about the torches. We don't need that. On the 17th of November, we're going to ride 200k. Easy. Boz just bought a bike today. How much elevation is it? Um, 1,300. It's not much. Yeah, it's not much, mate. It's not big deal. It, it just hits you at the middle, which is quite hard. Oh. I think all Can in all, run? it's 56. <laughs> I, hey, um, a friend of ours, no. um, Kath Todd, she did that two years ago. She ran the really? same coast-to-coast course. Wow. And really? it was 220 then at the time. On the same day? 
No, not on the same day. I think it's a but week she before. she just went and did it. Oh, it's an incredible wow. runner. But that, I mean, that's probably one of the most, the, the biggest cycling event in the calendar, right? Uh, now. Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, it's not the biggest in terms of numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because that obviously the 92 is big. Um, but it's, I think it's the, we have to have people finish in a certain time. There's a minimum um, speed that they have to go, which is 27 and a half. So right. you really have to be up to speed. It's right. not fast, yeah. but you really have to have an average. Right. Um, otherwise, you'd be there all day. Don't forget, you're in a group. We, we, we split the groups up into uh, pods of 30 to 40 people. Okay. And you have given a pre um, guest average. Right. So you right. are cycling with the right type of group. Right, right. So you're not blowing up before you hit the mountains because yeah. you've been following a group that goes 40 kilometers an hour yeah, yeah, yeah. when you're actually not able to cope with that. <laughs> right. Um, so each group gets a um, police car. Wow. So they they also have to hand over to the next Emirates. And it, it literally is you are in the Dubai tour and the Sharjah tour or wow. whatever. You, you is, have, have, we, have two, we have a police car and a support car behind each pod, yeah. in front and behind each pod. They have wow. a ride captain who's in charge of keeping the group together and in, in behaving, let's behaving say. Well. Behaving well. <laughs> Keep to the speed. So they have four checkpoints. So at each checkpoint they have everything they need, water, food, the um, Smith Street Paleo Balls Some as well. Smith Street I, balls, they absolutely yeah. love those, to be honest. <laughs> Good news. Um, uh, and fruit, w- fruit and everything. Yeah. So then they set off once they've done that. And it's, a, it's it, remember, it's not a race. Yeah. It's a ride. Right. So there's no urgency to get out of there as long as the group's together again and then they can set off at their pace. Right. I think that's one thing that comes through with all of the events that, that, that you ladies put together, there is a competitive side, but at the end of the day, your main purpose is that people really enjoy it and have a good time rather. And, okay, you've had some great runners come through. I'm sure you have a, one of the cycling pods is very fast and they're, they're very good cyclists. But the main reason that you're doing it is so that people can have a good time and it's open to and everyone. And it's safe. And it's safe, yeah. yeah. As safe as we can make it. I mean, anyone can break or twist an ankle, you know. For sure. It's going to happen in your lifetime. But... Our aim is enjoy it, uh, enjoy the group you're with, yeah. and and come back safe and be able to tell the tale that you have just managed to cycle <laughs> yeah, 200 kilometers. Yeah, I mean it's kilometer. no fun riding 200 kilometers on your own. We've done it. Yeah, we, we did that I'm ra- sure. We did that ride on our own. No way. Um, ages of, as we were doing the recce for the first coast to coast. Yeah. And um, Pascal it was had no a, fun. Pascal <laughs> had a total meltdown because <laughs> <laughs> I told her we were closer to the end than we were. Yeah, of course. And, uh, <laughs> sat we're down. We're nearly there. Yeah. I was begging for food. <laughs> <laughs> but, and when somebody tells you you're almost there and you think, okay, I can wait with food, I can wait with food, and then you see a 50 kilometers to go sign, you think, I'm stopping, I'm not going anywhere until I've had some food. <laughs> <laughs> Can't really wait. How do you put together, you said something quite interesting there, that each of on on the coast to coast because that's a bike race that's on public roads you have a police car at the front a police car at the back your job as event organizers logistically must be incredible and i have another question to add on to the end of that how do i get my bike back from the other coast uh logistic wise i'll let you do the safety a bit but the logistic wise we have um options for people to uh, click onto the uh, registration form to also get a bus ride back okay. and a, uh, a truck for your bike Oh, um, wow. We give uh, packing into your race bag so you can pack your bike safely wow. and then hand it over to us. So you, if, you're, if you're afraid for scratches, or et cetera, yeah, you can yeah. actually protect your bike. Wow. And then we have a um, we actually made a very safe and um, ingenious way of putting it on a truck, but only four bikes at the time. So it's not like a mass pileup of bikes. It's yeah. uh, four bikes at the time, and then there's a rack, and then and, and the next rack goes on. Wow. So it's, uh, it's, it's something that... That's what we are good at, I think. We yeah. always think every scenario from really? A to B and what if, what is our option, what is plan B. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, I wouldn't want someone... take My bike is my pride and joy. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. I know what bike people are like with yeah. their bikes as I am. And it's really important that we take care of people's bikes and they know that they're in safe hands. So that's something that's quite important to us. How many people we have in? How many people did you have in the Coast to Coast race last year? 375 yeah. wow. ish, I think. Wow. So I'm hoping for a few more this year because I know some people didn't do it last year <laughs> because they were seeing how it went with a new organizer, seeing right. how the new kind of organization would go. Yeah. Because some people don't like being 
told they have to be in a group. Yes. They like to just do yes. their own thing. But it was a success. And in the end, yeah, we got some very good... Fi- some people will never like that. Of course. Some people of will never course. like being herded into it. Yeah. But again, it's not like we're saying you must stay in that group. That's something that you have to... You can't uh, um, go, go out of that group. Yeah. If you're too slow for that group, you can drop back to the next pod right. so they can join that. Yeah. If you drop back and drop back and drop back, which we had 10 pods, if you're going to be too slow for the end group i'm afraid you're on the sweeper boss we have yeah. the grim sweeper really yeah but oh if, you know you can you can also move up a group if you find your group right. is too slow you wait till you get to the feed station and move out with that group as well so it's not so rigid that you don't have any movement either yeah. way but I, I think it took a first year to really establish that that's what's going to happen yeah we just don't want anyone to be isolated on their own yeah. that's the, the key yeah. the key is you have pods for protection so don't try to uh, leapfrog from one group to the next in between, you know, feed stations. Yeah. Going to the big stinker. Coming back to the funky names that you use. Talk us through a little bit about the big stinker. People might see this advertised and wonder what on earth is the big stinker. What is the big stinker? Well, the big stinker is a, a mountain that is actually in Cat Springs, but we've renamed it the big stinker because it <laughs> really is. It's 540 meters high. Oh, wow. Over 12 kilometers. Right. So you do... Uh, six th- kilometers up. Yeah. 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 Over, over 12... The loop is 12 kilometers, yeah. sorry. So wow. you do three loops. For the ex- for the 45K, you do an extended piece. Right. Um, we change that now. We, we're doing... It, you have choice. One loop, two loop, or three loops. Right. And everybody goes to the same uh, yeah. turnaround this yeah. year. It, it used to be that you go to the top and then turn around. Yes. But it's easier that everybody goes to that little bit extra... Everybody has grown enough now. Hang for on a minute. So you've just so made it harder. Sorry, so it's slightly longer. <laughs> slightly longer, everybody. So you've just Pascal. made it longer and harder. Pascal, I wasn't going to reveal that just yet. <laughs> and you still it, want people to sign up for this. It used to be 12K. Now it's going to be 15K it for used, one loop. It used right. to be a 12, 24 or 45. Now it's a 15, a 30 or a 45. Wow. But so the extended bit is really lovely because the extended <laughs> bit <laughs> she comes again. goes into a lovely little valley. And yeah. if you're lucky, you'll see lots of wild dabby going because the, the sheikh has a little majlis up there. So wow. he has loads of wild roaming uh, dabbies up there. And it's really, really quite special. Wow. That's so, <laughs> so, folks, if you want to go and run up a big mountain once, twice, or three times. The big stinker is the one. What would you, what's your favourite of, of all the events? Well, but just can I just say, you yeah. run down it as well. You do run down it, but that hurt my legs. It will. <laughs> it's not your legs, <laughs> it will. toes but, a little bit. But by bit. the time you get to the finish, to, to the, the turnaround to do another loop, yeah. you've forgotten all about the pain, so you start Absolutely again. true. Yeah. Until you're halfway up. Yeah. Yeah. And then you think, why did I, I do that? I did, did three loops, and that was, yeah. But it's absolutely true. It's horrific going up. And then you're at the top and it's super nice. It was very windy that year as well. Super windy. And then the first bit of coming down hurts your toes. But then when you're at the bottom, you just want to go back yeah. up again. Yeah. yeah. And it's a super view. If you have a clear day, you can yes. see the coast. You see yeah. whole of Wrestlegema. Yeah, it's um, very nice. It's really, really pretty. Yeah. Favorite events? The Favorite event of the calendar for, for you? I'd say the Hadja. Hadja? It's, 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 uh, you know, it's massive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's a 50k run or a 100k run? Yeah. Now let's choose. do it the other way around. 100k yeah. or if you want to do half 50k. <laughs> <laughs> They're brutal, mate. Both they? Nothing those in two. between. Just 50 <laughs> yeah, or 100. Absolutely. Both of those two, the Shabatli um, Big Stinker and the Hajar 100, both yeah. have UTMB points. So you get two for the, Shab- uh, two for the Hajar 100 and one for the Big Stinker. So if you're going to do a race at the UTMB, you can use it as your... UTMB standing for? Which is the Ultra Trail Mont Blanc okay. in, in France. So you can use it to qualify for that race. Right. So you have affiliate? do you affiliate those races with them? Yeah, we're, we're an wow. ITRA member, which is the Trail Running Association member. So wow. then we give the um, routes to them. They yep. evaluate how hard they are based on the elevation, the time we take, wow. we give them to finish. Then they give you the points according to um, yeah. those so it really is no joke. No, <laughs> no it's not. <laughs> it's really no joke. We really definitely need to do at least one of these. And the Hadjar is... take all the coaches. Yeah, Hadjar is... Uh, logistic is, is our biggest race. I mean, it takes a lot of cars, a lot of people, yeah. a lot of organization. Um, we we associate ourselves now with uh, the tul- uh, Golden Tulip Hot Springs. Yep. So people can have a, a cheap uh, rate at the hotel to stay the night before. We start very early, so you have half a night, basically. Yeah, yeah. 
but <laughs> um, we then take you by bus to the start point. Yeah. Start point is somewhere that you go over the first mountain. Uh, all our guys will drive around to meet you at the s- other side of the mountain. Wow. Um, you start at five, 5.30, I think it's a start. 5 it? o'clock we start now. How many yeah. support, just to give people an idea of the magnitude of support and service that you, you ladies offer, because I've seen it and it's huge. How many people supporting, for example, a 50 or 100K race would you have? Well, it's the same for either distance, put it that right. way. So it doesn't matter whether we're doing a 50 or a 100. It's, yeah. all, it's the same people. I mean, all I can say is I saw two Excel sheets full of um, wow. ambulances, people, vehicles. Yeah, uh, medical staff so it's it's we have a to have lot of changeover as well wow yeah. you know uh, it, i can't make them work 24 hours and the race is 24 you hours could do, but yeah yeah no <laughs> we do <laughs> i was gonna but say it's it's uh you know i, I need to know at w- which point the ambulance next staff need to come and wow. where they need to be and you know it's leapfrogging so they, they I, I need to know kind of where the first one is, where the last one is, I can't leave the last one and the first one on its own. Amazing. So, yeah, we have about 40, 40 people working on that race wow. to make sure that there are people on time. There are volunteers, there are our staff, there is the hired uh, medical staff, the buses, the minibuses, food. Absolutely incredible. We, 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 we cook our own food for you guys because we know that what we get from catering service is not enough. Yeah. And it's not good enough. Right. And we know what you need. We know what you grave for. You, we, we know what should be in there. Yeah. And whatever we've done, we've tried it two, year, two years now with our um, Extreme 3, which is no longer, but um, uh, same for the Hadja. And it's just not good enough for me. So yeah. we it's right. It goes from experience, because from yeah. an experience point of view, having done races, you know what you can eat. Yeah, yeah. After 50K or after 100K, yeah. you just go... Like that that dry food, yeah. even though it's meaty, it's just it's just not what you can actually Absolutely. digest or d- yeah. swallow. So yeah. we give them nice curries and minestrone and soup, minestrone soup, and just stuff that, even though it's warm, yeah. although last year was an exception, um, you'd need something more substantial and warm to yeah. you. You may be just suffering a little bit at the end. You get cold, yeah, f- yeah. funny or not. Yeah, um, yeah, we have a fire going. Uh, it, you know, we know. It, you need to have your support bag so your bag needs to be there so that when you come and you've sweat and it's like yeah. 10 o'clock at night or 11 o'clock 12 or whatever whenever you arrive you need to be able to change immediately and Logistics. we have we have people there that immediately get your bag immediately make sure that you are changing and not just like collapsing and not doing anything <laughs> because I don't want to have them hyper hyper thermic uh, yeah, on the floor you know we yeah. have to have people that just keep an eye on that on people it's incredible uh, or buddy them up with someone that has arrived an hour early and and you know they're waiting for someone is like just keep an eye on him I'm, i don't like the look of her or him <laughs> or you know and it may take yeah, half problem. an hour it just it just your body is it's reacting be me. yeah <laughs> i have to say just one thing though marcus when when you're talking about all the support people that we have yeah. when we were saying about 40 for hadja it's for family every, for every race that we call them our urban ultra family right. because most of them, 99% of these people are all volunteers. Amazing. They don't ask That's for any money. That's what I find incredible. And um, they, we treat them like uh, they are our friends. They, yeah, we don't treat them like they are our friends. And um, they're eagerly awaiting the next calendar so they can mark wow. them off in their diary. So they're free for that weekend, which for me is a real, um, I find it very, you know, touching that yeah, they want to come and help. We're not yeah. making them come and help. No. They want to come, yeah. and they do a fantastic job for us. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Without being paid, it is they are the most valuable pe- things that we have yeah. about the race. The people that, that actually are behind the scenes. I think it's phenomenal. I think what what you ladies have done is absolutely brilliant. We first came into contact, I think, in 2013 or 2014 when I was preparing for a race, and the races were just incredible. And that's one thing that I want to sort of highlight to people is you don't even charge that much. The it's races not. are it's so not. cheap to enter as You'd well. You'd be surprised how many people find it That's too much. Though. What's the average price that you, you charge nowadays for a race? 275. 275, wow. yeah. 275, yeah. And that was 250 to start with, so we haven't really increased the price over those min- that many And years. you have up to 40 staff. You're giving them food. You've got ambulances. The logistics just sound like nothing I want to get involved in. I thought these wires were complicated, but <laughs> <laughs> they're actually super easy. Well, and this is another reason that sometimes on the smaller races, and when I say smaller, it's, it's the amount of people that enter for those races. We can't afford like proper timing systems yeah you get timed yeah we have our systems yeah. it's just the next day you get your excel sheet everybody's it's in it's a proper there. timing system it it's is just not a chip <laughs> it's not yeah. a chip exactly it's, it's done is, as you go over the line which, which is yeah. more which than in fine. trail running 
very rarely do you get a sprint finish, so it really doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, it's I suppose not. on the actually on the night rebel, I, I would say is the, the the one where you would have mostly a sprint finish, but that, yeah. even that is like thirty seconds or a minute. Yeah, it's not so even close. No. Yeah, I think I think at the end of some of those races, people are uh, just happy to get over the line rather yeah. than to sprint yeah. for the we line. Yeah, ha- we have them on the Hadja and we have them on the Big Stinker because they are official UTMB point collectors, so right. we need to prove so that to prove we have it. had um, the runners, etc. But you know, it has to be said that it's part of, of trail running. Trail yeah. running is a smaller niche group, and you have not masses of people that you know you can then afford um, uh, timing systems. Very good, super interesting. Definitely got Andre. Uh, got me hooked. You're in. Kind of. Which one? <laughs> I'll start with the, the shortest one for now. Mate, that, the Hajar 100. <laughs> Maybe just the 10K. <laughs> Maybe t- <laughs> well, that one's in the dark, mate. It's a completely different experience. No You've problem. learned that in the last 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, thank you so much for coming and chatting to us. Super interesting. Where can we find you? Where do we register? Tell us how to be in touch, all of this stuff. Okay, so you can register on urbanultra.com. Urbanultra.com. And you can also email us through their uh, events at urbanultra.com. Awesome. The other thing I wanted to um, highlight is there are training groups for our races as well as for the cycle events. Right. So on the Coast to Coast, um, we have regular events posted on the um, uh, Coast to Coast Cycle Challenge dot com. Right. Um, Keep an eye on that. Also on Roadsters and there is a Facebook page for Coast to Coast. So on all of those, you'll find when there are um, uh, cycle so a few uh, months rides. out from the events, people start to fire yep. up and, and to train. Yep. Uh, if we wanted to get involved in trail running on a regular basis, you mentioned a few groups before. Yeah, Who so yeah. We? the Desert Trail Runners. Desert, desert Trail, trail Runners. runners. Um, yeah. A guy called um, Lee Harris. Lee Harris. Yep. He, he does regular uh, runs and he also does gym work with people yep. specifically for trail yep. trail uh, exercises. So. It's, it would be a good group to, to connect yeah, yourself he's with. A, he's a good guy and a good resource as well. He's very, very kind with his information. And it's, it's almost, it's, you don't have to be a trailer and you can be a total beginner. Yeah. And they will, Lee will help you out. Yeah. They'll welcome you with open arms. You don't have Absolutely. to be a, a veteran of trail running. There we go. If you want to get involved in some outdoor things, Urban Ultra are your people. UrbanUltra.com. Plenty of events, nice short ones for you and I, Andre, and some longer ones for maybe we get the other coaches yeah. involved. <laughs> Ladies, thank you very much thank for your you time. Much. Hope thank to see you, you at some of the events. Thank, thank you. you. Cheers. Thanks a lot for tuning in to this episode of the podcast, folks, and I do hope you've enjoyed it. And a massive thanks to Louise and Pascal. Very, very inspiring. Something started there out of absolute passion just for being outdoors, and now they're able to provide some awesome events across the cooler season here in the UAE for all the residents and, as they said, some international people. So please be sure to check them out, urbanultra.com. Of course, if you do have any questions that you need to ask us, winning at the fight.com, we'd absolutely love to hear from you. Until next time, take care.